Frequency cast. Special report. Startup in progress. Hi, this is Pete from the Frequency Cast TV and Tech Podcast. For all you fans of the classic BBC TV sitcom Only Fools and Horses, here's an exclusive interview captured with one of the stars. Hi, this is Sue Holderness, Marlene from Only Fools and Horses, and you are listening to the Frequency Cast Technology Show. I met up with Sue at the launch of an Only Fools and Horses exhibition on the pier at Southend-on-Sea, and I couldn't resist asking Sue for some of her memories of that classic TV series. Fans were queuing to get a picture of Sue in her leopard print clobber, and to get a picture of her next to a certain three-wheeler. I mean, what, what can we say about the van? Everybody loves this van. It is a, it is a dreadful little car, isn't it? Truly dreadful little car. However, it is now iconic. The whole exhibition is smashing. There's all sorts of interesting stuff. We've got blown up pictures of all the people. There's, you even have the opportunity, believe it or not, to have the chandelier crashing down at your very feet in this exhibition. No, it's good fun. And noticing the van close up, I can see bits of old gaffer tape and all sorts of things. Attention to detail is clearly a, yes. an important thing with Fools and Horses. Yes, and, and, and quite a lot of leopard print around, which makes me feel, of course, a bit more comfortable. <laughs> I like all that leopard print. And uh, you're obviously in the leopard print today, and there's one of your... Which coat is that that we're looking at on the, uh, on the display there? That's a very beautiful coat that we had in Sky's the Limit, when Boise had his big satellite dish up in the garden and we were supposed to be taking young Tyler out for a walk and Boise was was obsessed by this ghastly thing in the garden and the baby was dressed in the exactly identical outfit with a little leopard print hood and it's one of the many occasions when the baby has stolen the scene. Uh, babies and animals always steal the scene and that was a perfect example. Of course it says never work with children and animals but if they steal the scene that's probably why. That's the reason why and John Salomon constantly wrote scenes with either a child or an animal or both for me to be in and inevitably Duke or Earl or the baby would steal the scene. Of course, yes, Duke. Yes, I do remember that classic episode. Yes, that was a good one. Was he fun to work with? The awfully sad thing is we actually had four Dukes because, of course, the show went on for such a long time. Thank you, God. We, you know, it started in 81 and the last, uh, last episode went out in 2003 and so no Great Danes last that long. We had four adorable Dukes, some more adorable than others. There was one who, I don't know, some of your, your listeners may remember a scene where Rodney was sent to play with Duke in the garden while Dell discussed the business of trying to sell a baby to Boise and Marlin. And in the, this actual dog did have a passion for Rodney. And there was this very long scene with the dog leaping all over Rodney in a very amorous fashion, which they filmed all of it. The crew in hysteria. And of course, poor Rodney, Nicholas Linders, having to act his way through this scene. And then he staggers into the house going, he's a rascal. Well, I mean, the, the crew were in complete hysterics because this dog had... Well, it had behaved very rudely with Nicholas Lindhurst. I can say no more, but otherwise he was an adorable dog. So you mentioned 1981, obviously quite some time ago. Are you amazed by how much of a following Fools and Horses still has? Everybody is, is amazed that it should have gone on and be, carried on being as successful and as popular as it is, except there's a bit of me that isn't that surprised because, I mean, recently I've looked back at a few, some of the episodes that happened before I ever went into it, and they are just classic stories, wonderful, wonderfully crafted. Some of them very moving. You know, we, we're, we're always saying how brilliant John Sullivan was at writing comedy, but he was also not afraid to tackle really quite serious subjects. You know, he wrote about miscarriage and infertility and loneliness and death. He wrote about all these things, but he always managed to make it funny. And, and he managed to make it funny to every age group. There isn't a single episode where you can't sit down with a five-year-old or a 95-year-old and everybody will love it. Everybody will find it funny, some in very different ways. But nobody will ever be offended. Sometimes people will get a lump in the throat and they'll cry. And it, 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 there, there's very little on the television that, that you can actually say that's true of, where you get very genuinely moved, you get his, hysterical so that your sides ache with mirth. And you just learn, they, people have learned to love the characters and I just think it's the great skill of John Sullivan that he appealed to, appealed to every age group. Maybe that's the basic reason that it's lasted so long. May well be. It certainly survived well with age as well. I mean, looking back on some of the older episodes, we see things like the invention of the mobile phone, Dell holding his first phone, and you think today it's something we take for granted. But in those days, of course, it was uh, 
new technology we're beginning to see brought in there. Well, that's one of the interesting things about that. That is what dates the episodes, of course. You see these, these phones the size of bricks and video recorders the size of suitcases. And you, it's, it's quite fun for those of us who lived through that time because it does take you back. But it's interesting as a sort of historical document for the current generation to see what it was like for their parents. See, the, the, the amazing equipment that we, we dealt with while they're managing to go on email and their tiny little phones. It is a, it is a very different world, isn't it? Absolutely, very true. So I have to ask, is there any chance on the horizon of any repeat performances either from, uh, from Marlene or Del Boy in the coming years? Well, I've, you know, I've met up with David Jason a few times recently at various do's and we always think it would be very really nice to work together again. This is the tragedy, that they, it was rumoured that there would be one last episode, a Christmas special, the Christmas before last, where they would get us all back together. Boise and Marlene would come back up from the country and there'd be a Christmas special, in, in, reuniting everybody. But the tragedy was that in the April, two years ago, John Sullivan, a hale and hearty, apparently completely healthy 64-year-old, suddenly succumbed to viral pneumonia and it's the it's a great tragedy for his family but it's a great tragedy for the nation too really because I do think there's nobody like him it's still very hard to believe he's not with us we carried on genuinely thinking that more episodes could happen because John Sullivan always said that he could write Only Fools and Horses until he died he had enough stories to keep him going forever well he died too soon and it's a great tragedy for us all and so there won't be any more. I can absolutely guarantee there won't be any more because nobody would have the heart to, to, to try to attempt it without him. John Sullivan's son, Jim, is a very good writer and he wrote some smashing episodes for The Green Green Grass. But even Jim, I don't think, would take on trying to bring Only Fools back without his dad. It just wouldn't be right. The fortune, of course, is we've got some very good quality episodes that will stay with us forever and hopefully stand the test of time. They do stand the test of time, I think, and people occasionally grumble about, their being, about shows being repeated again and again. But, you know, they wouldn't repeat them if people didn't watch them. And I've had so many people say to me that bad things have happened in their lives. People have got sick or you're just particularly tired or upset for something that's happened at work. And Only Fools is what people put on to cheer themselves up. And, you know, they say laughter is the best medicine. So I think John Sullivan has probably saved the nation a great deal of money because people put on an episode, have a laugh and they are cured of many ills so long may they continue to repeat them. Absolutely and of course so many words have passed into parlance now. Yeah. yeah. Lovely jubbly being just two. Yeah, yeah, no, you, and, and the, the, the fun thing is when you go abroad, I remember in, in, in just outside Mumbai I stopped in a cafe that was really a garage and they came out and said, lovely jubbly, what are you wanting? And I thought this is, and they didn't recognise me, I don't think, as Marlene, it just was that what they do. And there was a picture of the yellow van at the back of their, this garage. Everywhere you go you find that people are saying don't be a plonker and, and lovely jubbly and all those other, other wonderful terms and bonjour and, and bonnet de douche and you know <laughs> it's, it, it's nice it's become a sort of common language internationally Thanks very much to Sue for taking the time to chat with me about one of my all time favourite TV series Only Fools and Horses For a few photos of Sue and for more information on the Trotters on Sea exhibition please visit our website www.frequencycast.co.uk If you're new to FrequencyCast, we're a free, regular podcast covering TV and tech news in the UK. You can catch our shows online or download them as a podcast to your MP3 or smartphone. Do give us a try. The address again, www.frequencycast.co.uk Frequency cast. Special report. Shutdown complete.